Welcome to our latest video on the reactions of alcohols, oxidation and dehydration reactions. This video is suitable for AS and A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be aware that primary alcohols can be partially oxidised to an aldehyde and fully oxidised to a carboxylic acid when reacted with the oxidising agent acidified potassium dichromate. You should also understand that secondary alcohols can be oxidised with acidified potassium dichromate to form ketones and that tertiary alcohols do not undergo oxidation. Finally, you should be aware that alcohols undergo dehydration reactions to form alkenes. Now in our previous video lessons, we've discussed the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols. Primary alcohols have one alkyl group next to the carbon next to the OH. Secondary alcohols have two alkyl groups on the carbon next to the OH. And tertiary alcohols have three alkyl groups on the carbon next to the OH. So here's an example to show what we mean. So here is ethanol, and ethanol is classed as a primary alcohol because if you look at the carbon next to the OH group, there is one alkyl group attached and that alkyl group is a methyl group. Now primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols behave differently with oxidizing agents. And in this video, we're gonna look at the different reactions that they undergo. So it's important that you can recognize a primary, secondary and tertiary alcohol. Now primary and secondary alcohols undergo oxidation reactions with oxidizing agents such as acidified potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7. Now, a primary alcohol can partially oxidize to an aldehyde if you heat it gently with acidified potassium dichromate, and dilute sulfuric acid is used to acidify the potassium dichromate. Now, when the primary alcohol is partially oxidized to an aldehyde, it loses two hydrogen atoms. And if you look at the general formula here, the general formula of a primary alcohol is RCH2OH. And if you lose two hydrogens, one from the OH and one from the carbon next to the OH, you'll be left with an aldehyde, RC double bond OH. Now remember, an R group is an alkyl group. And if we look at the example here, we have ethanol, which is our primary alcohol, and it oxidizes with gentle heat and acidified potassium dichromate to ethanol, which is our aldehyde. Both contain one alkyl group. Now, this is only partial oxidation because aldehydes can be oxidized further to carboxylic acids. So you have to make sure that you only gently heat the alcohol, the primary alcohol, with acidified dichromate. Now aldehydes undergo further oxidation to carboxylic acids. And to do this, you reflux the aldehyde with excess acidified potassium dichromate. So if we look at our chemical equation here, we have ethanol being oxidized to ethanoic acid. And ethanol is our aldehyde, and ethanoic acid is our carboxylic acid. And an oxidizing agent is represented by the symbol O for oxygen with square brackets. That represents an oxidizing agent. Now acidified potassium dichromate is orange in color, and that's because of the dichromate ion, Cr2, O7 to minus. That causes the orange color. And whenever dichromate oxidizes a substance, it changes to green. And that's because it changes to a Cr3 plus ion. And that causes the green color. Now, if dichromate changes to Cr3 plus, the charge on the chromium, the oxidation state on the chromium, is changing from plus six to plus three. So therefore, it's being reduced. It's going from plus six oxidation state to plus three. 
it's gaining electrons. Where do these electrons come from? They come from the aldehyde that's been oxidized. Because remember, oxidation is a loss of electrons. Now, primary alcohols can be partially oxidized to aldehydes and fully oxidized to form carboxylic acids. And if you want to miss out the aldehyde stage, so in other words, you want to fully oxidize your primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid, you have two options. Firstly, you could use acidified potassium dichromate and reflux the primary alcohol with that and make sure you have excess of the oxidizing agent and you should get the carboxylic acid but there is a risk that you will have some aldehyde as well and you can separate these by using fractional distillation. Now this would work because the aldehyde and the carboxylic acid have different boiling points. Remember the carboxylic acid has hydrogen bonding and has a much higher boiling point than the aldehyde that has permanent dipole, permanent dipole intermolecular forces. Now, potassium dichromate is a mild oxidizing agent. And if you want to minimize the risk of having any aldehyde present, you could use a much stronger oxidizing agent. And an example of one of these would be acidified potassium permanganate or potassium manganate 7. Now it's called potassium manganate 7 because the manganese is plus 7 oxidation state. And this much more powerful oxidizing agent will oxidize a primary alcohol straight to the carboxylic acid. So you won't get the aldehyde. And the conditions needed for this would be refluxing with acidified potassium permanganate. Now, just like the dichromate, whenever potassium permanganate oxidizes a substance, there's a color change to let you know that the oxidation has taken place. And acidified potassium permanganate goes from purple to colorless when it oxidizes a substance. So now let's look at secondary alcohols. Secondary alcohols have two alkyl groups on the carbon next to the OH. And when a secondary alcohol is oxidized, there is only one possible product, and that is a ketone. And a ketone also contains two alkyl groups. And as a general formula, R, C double bond O, R. And an example of a secondary alcohol is propantuol, because it contains two alkyl groups attached to the carbon next to the OH. And when propantuol is oxidized, it changes to propanone, a ketone. And propanone just like propantuol, has two alkyl groups. Now, when this oxidation takes place, just as we had with our primary alcohol changing to an aldehyde, the secondary alcohol loses two hydrogens. It loses a hydrogen from the OH, and it loses another hydrogen from the carbon next to the OH. And we're left with our ketone. Now, once again, acidified potassium dichromate can be used to carry out this oxidation. Now you only have to heat this secondary alcohol gently with acidified potassium dichromate to obtain the ketone. Now you could also use acidified potassium permanganate for this, but you only need a mild oxidizing agent to carry out this oxidation. Now we've discussed the oxidation reactions of primary and secondary alcohols. Now, when it comes to a tertiary alcohol, an alcohol that has three alkyl groups attached to the carbon next to the OH, they do not undergo oxidation reactions at all. And this is an important difference between them and primary and secondary alcohols. Now, if you had an unknown alcohol and wanted to prove whether it's a primary, secondary or tertiary, if you heated it with acidified potassium dichromate and no color change took place, you would know that you had a tertiary alcohol because a tertiary alcohol cannot be oxidized at all with acidified potassium dichromate or acidified potassium permanganate. So now let's move on to look at dehydration reactions. Now a dehydration reaction is a reaction where the elements hydrogen and oxygen 
are removed from a compound in the same proportions as in water. Now, when an alcohol is dehydrated, an alkene is produced. Now, this reaction is also an example of an elimination reaction because we start with a single reactant and we form multiple products. And that's how you spot an elimination reaction where you have a single reactant forming multiple products. And an elimination reaction really is the opposite of an addition. In an addition reaction, we have multiple reactants joining together to form a single product. So if you're not sure whether it's an elimination reaction, just look at it in reverse. This reaction in reverse would be an, an addition reaction. Now there are a number of dehydrating agents you could use to convert an alcohol to an alkene. And two examples of dehydrating agents are concentrated sulfuric acid and aluminium oxide. And if you were to heat an alcohol with either, you would get an alkene and water. So if we look at this example here, we have ethanol. It's dehydrated using concentrated sulfuric acid and we get ethene and water. And the reaction is an example of an elimination reaction because I have a single reactant being converted to multiple products. And the reaction is also an example of a dehydration reaction because the elements hydrogen and oxygen have been removed from a compound in the same proportions as water. Now the following diagram shows the apparatus I could use to carry out a dehydration reaction. And the apparatus is very similar to the apparatus I'd use to carry out a cracking reaction. So all we have is a boiling tube and in the boiling tube I would put some mineral wool and that would be soaked in my alcohol. Now in this experiment I've chosen ethanol as my alcohol and I've chosen aluminium oxide as my dehydrating agent. So if I heat up the aluminium oxide the ethanol turns to vapour passes over the aluminium oxide and an alkene is formed and it passes through a delivery tube and I can collect it as a gas by displacing water from a test tube and my gas is ethene and if I wanted to test for that I would add some bromine water and I would see if it would decolorize it would go from orange to colorless because that's the test for an alkene. So now let's test your understanding of oxidation and dehydration with some practice questions. So here's our first practice question. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go through the answers. So question 1a is asking you to draw the structural formula of the compound you get when you gently heat pentan 1 ol with acidified potassium dichromate. Now, pentan 1 ol is a primary alcohol, and if you gently heat it with acidified potassium dichromate, you will partially oxidize it to an aldehyde, and the aldehyde you get is pentanal, and that has a formula CH3, CH2, 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 C double bond O, H. Now question 1b is asking you to draw the structural formula of the compound you get when you gently heat pentantuol with acidified potassium dichromate. Now pentantuol is a secondary alcohol. So therefore, if you oxidize a secondary alcohol, you get a ketone. And the ketone you get is pentantuone. So this is CH3, C double bond O, CH2, CH2, CH3. And it's called pentantuol because the C double bond O is on carbon 2. Now the reason that the C double bond O is on carbon 2 is because the OH was on carbon 2. And remember, when you oxidize a secondary alcohol, you take the hydrogen away from the OH and a hydrogen away from the carbon next to the OH. So that's why you end up with pentan 2 -ohm. Now 
Now let's go for the answers to question 1c and 1d. So 1c, you're asked to draw the compound you get when you gently heat hexanthriol with acidified potassium dichromate. Now hexanthriol is a secondary alcohol. So if you oxidize a secondary alcohol, you get a ketone. And the ketone you get is called hexanthrione. So the C double bond O is now on carbon three because the OH of the alcohol was on carbon three. So hexanthrione is CH3, CH2, C double bond O, CH2, CH2, CH3. Now for question 1D, you're asked to draw the product you get if you gently heat hexanthrione with acidified potassium dichromate. Now hexanthrione is a primary alcohol. So if you gently heat it with acidified potassium dichromate, you will get the aldehyde and the aldehyde is hexanal. And hexanal is CH3, CH2, 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 C double bond O, H. So here's our second practice question for you to have a go at. Once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question two is asking you to state the reagents and conditions needed to convert butanol to butanoic acid in a one-step reaction. So there's two possible reagents you could use. You could either use acidified potassium dichromate or you could use acidified potassium permanganate, known as manganate 7. Now the conditions needed to convert the primary alcohol to the carboxylic acid would be reflux. And if I choose to use the milder acidified potassium dichromate, I would probably have to have excess of the acidified potassium dichromate because it's a much milder oxidizing agent. So for this question, there's two marks available. One is given for the oxidizing agent and one for the conditions. Now, for the second part of this question, they're asking how you would separate the butanoic acid from any unreacted butanol. Now, these are both liquids, so you could use fractional distillation because they would have different boiling points. The carboxylic acid has a higher boiling point because it has stronger hydrogen bonding. And if you said fractional distillation, there's one mark for this. So here's question three, our last practice question. And the question is saying that butanol can also be dehydrated. Name a suitable dehydrating agent and write an equation for this reaction. So there's two marks for this. Pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go for the answers to question three. So for one mark, you asked to name a dehydrating agent and the dehydrating agent you could use could either be concentrated sulfuric acid or aluminium oxide. Both would work well with butanol and there's one mark for that. And for the next part, you asked to write an equation to show what happens to butanol when it's dehydrated. So butanol would convert to an alkene. So I've drawn but one in here and water as the other product. And this reaction is an example of an elimination reaction. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be aware that primary alcohols can be partially oxidized to an aldehyde and fully oxidized to a carboxylic acid when reacted with the oxidizing agent acidified potassium dichromate. You should also understand that secondary alcohols can be oxidized with acidified potassium dichromate to form ketones and that tertiary alcohols do not undergo oxidation. Finally, you should be aware that alcohols undergo dehydration reactions to form alkenes. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry.